Thank you, Nitin. <clears throat> My name is Frank Bareis. I'm a product manager with SAP SuccessFactors, responsible for employee central integrations. Let me go into the details of the hire to retire business process. It starts on the left side where we can analyze the workforce demographics in people analytics uh, to get uh, informed hiring decisions about the needs that we have in our organization. From that, we uh, request the job requisition um, and submit it in the end. And now we start the recruiting part of the hire to retire process. So this is where the job is posted. We screen and interview the candidates. We rank and select the candidates finally to um, approve them and send out the offer letter. In the end of the recruiting, process as usual af after all of the part of the partial processes that we have uh, we um, measure the recruiting effectiveness again here through our analytical capabilities after the offer letter is out and the candidate has accepted the offer letter uh, we create the new hire tasks in onboarding so we start fairly early with onboarding. This is where we can already assign a buddy, assign a mentor to the new employee. We can collect um, the personal data that is still missing. We collect the compliance forms, perform post-hire tasks and complete the onboarding in the end. Again, measuring the success of the process through analytics. Once onboarding is completed um, and we have all the necessary data, we can then uh, come to the core HR part of the process, manage the pending hires, um, get the, the employee onboarded and into the system. And as soon as we have the future hire now in the system, we can work with the data, with the, the employee um, availability, for example, uh, at the bottom, you see the, the S4HANA part of it. It's the project management uh, process that we look into. So the employee is available and can be assigned to project tasks. And once the employee is working on the, on the project, record his or her working times, project types to it. Um, back to the core HR system, this is where um, live and work events happen frequently to the employee. So live events, for example, changing the bank account, moving houses, uh, birth of a child, that all needs to be reflected in the HR system. And work events can be like a promotion, like a, a different job that's coming. So all that needs to be handled in the core HR system. The employee needs to be paid, so we need to run a payroll, again here with analytical capabilities, pre-payroll, uh, post-payroll analytics. And in the end, the payroll results are being handed over to finance. So here again, integrating with S4HANA Finance, book the payroll results, book also the project expenses, and come to the month end, quarter end, year end closings in finance. So with that, the, the hire to retire process is described. Let me come to the stakeholders, to the involved parties of the process and, and what kind of benefits and business value they really get out of an integrated hire to retire process. Let me start with the head of HR, the chief HR officer. Um, that role, that stakeholder in the process is really interested in getting the workforce engaged and productive quickly. That is the, the department where the talent decisions are handled. So we need to have all kinds of insights for that uh, stakeholder to make better talent decisions. Second here is the head of the lines of business, uh, like a sales, like a supply chain um, line of business. That's the, the overall head that has some benefits here. Uh, but also we look into the simple managers of our employee that we are talking about. Um, so that 
role that stakeholder is really interested in consistently using the people data that we get out of the HR system for the lines of business processes, the data, the, the decisions that need to be taken there. The, the manager itself of an employee, that is the one frequently involved in the, in the work events of an, of an employee. So when it comes to a promotion, to a different job, etc., this is often triggered by the manager. So that stakeholder has certainly interest in a, in a smooth process. The internal worker then um, that, that is the person that we have hired, onboarded, that is assigned to the projects. Here we need, need to be sure to have a fast and efficient onboarding, a very good user experience for that employee because the, the HR tasks are not the daily work, basically. So it's e infrequent usage of the system. And that's the, the key benefits, the value for that stakeholder. Coming to the right side, uh, finance, the chief finance officer, of course, is interested in the workforce costs, risks, performance. So gain visibility into that, but also collaborate closely with the um, HR, with the head of HR uh, to get the company goals achieved. On the right side, we have the CIO of the company, um, very, very interested in minimizing the integration costs that can be very costly um, if not well integrated. So that is a, a key benefit for the CIO, but also um, security and access to the systems is of very crucial interest of that CIO. All right, now let, uh, with that, let me hand over to Mike to share the details about the external workforce management process. Thank you, Frank. My name is Mike Ewell and I'm from SAP Fieldglass within the product development. And I'm going to talk about uh, how the external workforce and your external labor relates to your recruit to retire scenario. So as this quote says here, over 42% of your labor is actually attributed to external resources. So that's a large number. It's almost half of your organization that's uh, tied to external resources. So uh, year over year, we see a st an increase in this percentage as organizations work to sort of be flexible and fulfill their project needs in a timely manner with the right skill sets that they have, uh, but also within budget and within a cost effective manner that they need to accomplish those things. So um, I'm going to talk through how uh, SAP Fieldgas can help you with that within the SAP suite of products. So moving forward, uh, here you'll see sort of end-to-end -end workflow of how this operates. And in the, in the middle, we'll have SAP Fieldglass. On the top, we'll have your HR system where uh, Success Factors has your organizational detail. And on the bottom, we'll have S4 with all of your financial ordering and procurement operations that exist within that. So uh, starting from left to right, you know, if you're um, Hiring for a position, you might see you have an immediate need for a project and directly out of success factors, you can uh, request an external resource. Now initiate that request to Fieldglass that will initiate a job posting that will go out to their staffing suppliers, your preferred suppliers, and ultimately uh, go to that pool of labor that you have that and, and an extended pool of labor that ultimately can meet those needs and has the skills that you uh, need to acquire in order to complete your project. Um, so um, upon selection of those candidates, it will basically solidify the staffing of that and create a work order in Fieldglass. And uh, from here, we'll move from the recruiting side to the order management. And that order management will initiate a purchase requisition and purchase order to S4 in order to make sure that the cost of the time of that project for the labor that you've hired is within the budget and approval of the financials that you need. So all of these integrations exist between Fieldglass and S4 in order to ensure that the projects that you're staffing for are within the financial controls that you want to operate within. So, um, and in parallel, while this is happening, um, so once that budget is approved, uh, it was released in the middle here to uh, the worker to start their work. Uh, so they will start their assignments once that budget is approved. And it'll also be visible into your overall employee org chart. So as a manager, you'll be able to see these are all the full-time employees I have, these are all the contractors I have, and external resources I have working on projects. 
So you will have full visibility into that um, from a, an org chart perspective and also from a financial perspective, uh, all of your costs of your full time and external labor is sort of all consolidated into one big bucket. So it gives you a full visibility into your total workforce. Um, and, you know, as the time goes and the operations happen, those deliverables that can be submitted within field glass. And as that happens, uh, we move to the last phase of this, which is the invoicing. And there is automated invoicing integrations that exist. So the uh, worker and suppliers can get paid timely. And basically, your, your, all of your financials are easily managed uh, from a budget perspective and ultimately from a billing and payment perspective at the end of the day. So um, all of this end to end gives you a really good picture of uh, how Field Glass can help you sort of uh, obtain the right staff that you need to do the work and also, you know, help manage to get your projects done and get those things done that you need in the right amount of time with the right labor that you have. So um, ultimately, it gives a good visibility into your total workforce. Now, who does this matter for, right? So the stakeholders I was referring to in that last workflow is uh, similar to the recruit to retire, but there's a, it's a little bit different with the external workforce. So uh, I would say on the, on the leftmost side, you have your uh, HR manager, and they, they are making sure that your, all your personnel is doing what you need to do. Uh, but with, with the budget I was referring to, you also have procurement. So they're making sure that your uh, you know, paying the right amount and, you know, that you're paying the right rates for the staff that you need. And in the middle, our external workers obviously getting things done uh, based on the skill set that they have in a fast and efficient manner. Um, and then on the rightmost side, we have your chief financial officers and your CIO. We're making sure that all of the end-to-end -end visibility and integration costs and the technical costs are being obtained for these, you know, ad hoc projects that you're doing with these external labors. So uh, overall, I think the uh, SAP Field Glass gives a, embeds a, a good platform for you to manage all of the things you need to do to get these folks into your organization in order to get all of the work you need done in a timely manner and measure that so you can only improve that and, you know, improve your costs year over year in the future. So uh, thank you. And from here, I'll pass on to you, Nathan. Thank you. Hello again. Uh, thanks, Michael. A great job. Uh, this is uh, Nitin again. Um, I want to uh, spend um, a few minutes on the key takeaways. Um, I hope uh, you have a much better understanding of the uh, critical business outcome that the chief HR officers are looking at. Uh, it's mainly around uh, the uh, exceptional workforce experience. And um, we have also shared with you our SAP's HR strategy around uh, the best of breed and best of uh, suite um, and um, how that is uh, enabling the CHROs to uh, meet their uh, main business outcome uh, and also um, help them build the workforce of the future. Um, we then also spend some time talking about uh, the SAP uh, BTP and the services that we have built uh, on it, as well as the sweet qualities as to how they are helping uh, ensure um, the interoperability of all the different um, uh, best of breed applications, but at the same time, uh, making sure that the recruit to retire business process runs uh, smoothly across the uh, intelligence suite. And then um, we also um, spent some time uh, talking about uh, the two uh, main uh, processes, uh, or two of the three processes within Recruit to Retire, which is the um, a Hire to Retire process as well as the external workforce process. And um, both Frank and uh, Michael uh, walked you through it and um, also importantly talked about the business value uh, that uh, these end-to-end -end, uh, smooth running uh, business processes can uh, deliver to our customers. Um, now, I also uh, have prepared um, uh, in terms of how to get started. Uh, we have um, uh, provided you with links um, the first one here is the SAP's integration strategy paper. This is uh, essentially written by our board members. 
Uh, we update these um, every uh, five, six months or so. Uh, the link uh, I have uh, provided is the latest one uh, that just came out in uh, November. So you can take a look at that. Uh, and um, we have some really good information in there. Uh, we have um, we have already done two uh, hire to retire um, open SAP courses uh, where we have sh uh, shared our strategy and uh, all the innovations that we are bringing. Uh, so um, I think we have somewhere between uh, 18 to 20,000 people already attend. So you can take advantage of that. Um, we have documented the end-to-end -end business processes um, in the API hub. Uh, so please do take a look at that. Our, our blogs have been received exceedingly well. So we have um, given you access to a few of those blogs, uh, read them, um, and then <clears throat> get engaged uh, with the SAP community. And uh, there you can even ask questions <coughs> and our experts can uh, absolutely help answer those. Um, and while you are preparing, while you're doing your homework, uh, we also would love to have a conversation with you guys. So um, if, if you have, if you're ready um, or just ha wanting to have conversations with SAP, uh, please do get in touch with your SAP account executive and we'll be happy to um, work with you guys and uh, hopefully cut a path uh, to becoming an intelligent enterprise. Uh, with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, we will see you in the next unit where uh, we'll um, have a couple of demos to show.